Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Electric Vibe. I'm your co-host, Kurt Hoffman, and my smooth voice brother from another mutter to my left is none other than... J. David Silva. Hey, The Electric Man. Jay, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, my man. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. We've had a busy, busy week leading up to Labor Day weekend here. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to ask you the question I, 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 I love to ask the most. Jay, who is our uh, special guest today? Kurt, I am honored to tell you that our special guest today is St. Paul Peterson, a singer and musician known not only for his successful solo endeavors, but also for the dozens of musicians he's worked with. From The Time to Prince to Donny Osmond, Alita Adams, Eric Leeds, F Deluxe, and more, St. Paul is well known and respected in a number of musical circles. In addition to all of that, St. Paul has always found the time to give back in his community and in the state of Minnesota, including singing the national anthem at baseball games, uh, to most recently being the president of the Rotary Club for the city of Edina. Now, let's just add to that pedigree and note that St. Paul is also the Director of Music and Liturgy at St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Edina. So I'm kind of thinking that we need to give St. Paul the new moniker of the busiest man in show business in life. And we are just very excited to talk to St. Paul Peterson today. Yay! We're going to give him an applaud, as he says, when one person's in the room, an applaud. That's right. Um, I want to add also, he's got a fantastic podcast of his own called Music on the Run. Absolutely. Uh, and I've definitely, when we get him on here shortly, uh, we're closing in on the uh, 12 o'clock hour, 11 o'clock his time, because he's in uh, Central Standard Time. Um, looking forward to speaking to him about uh, his running, uh, all the different facets of, of philanthropy that his family does uh, mm -hmm. with the University of Minnesota uh, scholarship. I mean, you know, he really does give back to his community. I mean, he's he's a diehard Minnesota guy, also a Vikings fan. We'll have to talk to him about the Vikings. Indeed. <laughs> yes, I see that. I, I wear a purple jersey, too, but it's for the Ravens, purple and black. He's got the purple and gold going on. And, uh, and, and his Vikings yeah. are playing my New York Giants in the first game of the season. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, know. that's right. Oh, you have to bring that up. But, but we still have love for St. Paul. And and let me just talk about that because I've been a St. Paul fan since his days back in the yeah. time. I mean, we're talking about ice cream castles back in 1984, 85, and then obviously through to, you know, his work with the family and his solo career. And, you know, the thing that I've always loved about St. Paul is just the interaction and the attention that he gives to his fans. You know, I mean, there have been times I've texted him with, you know, some of the most innocuous questions asking him about, you know, how he came up with a certain song or, yeah. you know, what he has going on. And he's always very responsive, very attentive to his fans. And, and I really, really do appreciate that. I mean, he's, he, he's super talented guy. I mean, um, when we had Ricky freeze on, I was thinking about this earlier today before, you know, prepping for the interview. There's similar uh, track there. He had a music music family. You know, his mom was an organist and keyboardist, like Ricky's mom was. Um, I'm sure there was some kind of religious component in there somewhere as well, but um, not to, to, to the degree that uh, Ricky had. But um, he comes from a musical family, you know. Right. Um, his first instrument was the drums, like Freeze. Mm -hmm. His secondary instrument was keyboards, like Freeze. And his, uh, well, Paul's main instrument, he would per say now is the bass guitar, but Ricky plays what? The bass in the current version of Morris Day in the Time. They both have been members of the Time. So they've got this whole uh, connect the dots universe that, that you know, tethers them into that whole Prince universe. That, right. uh, but they have a similar skill set. But on top of it, you know, I mean, St. Paul's a good looking dude and, you know, and he can sing his ass off. He's got the falsetto and the. I mean, and if you think about it, look at the number of, uh, you know, musical disciplines that, that Paul is, you know, famous mm -hmm. for. I mean, he, yeah. he can do funk, he can do pop, he can do rock, he can do jazz. I mean, the collaborations with Eric Leeds, you know, on Leeds Peterson, those alone right there, you know, just show the scope of his talent. Um, and so yeah. it, it, it's refreshing that, you know, you can pick up anything by St. Paul and you can always find something for everybody. I'm going to give you yep. one of my, my personal favorites is his version of Stevie Wonder's Loves in Need of Love today. It's uh, on, it's, on the new album that we've got. 
Absolutely. behind us. It, it is fantastic. You know, I mean, is. I, that, that is my favorite version. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I will have to respectfully say, man, it's always for me, it's always chicken versus the egg, man. I mean, the egg is Stevie's. Ver I mean, songs in the key of life's in my top three right there. It's, it's, it, Paul, Paul may agree, but I'm, and it's gutsy. It, yeah. It, it, is. it is gutsy to cover that kind of song, but he's the kind of guy he can, who can pull it off. The only other, I say this, you know, with all lovers, the only other white guy that's got the blue eyed soul component that's no longer with us that dared to record a Stevie Wonder song is none other than one of our favorites, George Michael. George Michael, right? They won't go when I go. I'm right. like, okay, he's going to do this. Oh, okay. Tears it up. Completely right. tears it up. A, a different, a more operatic kind of dynamic on, on that tune. I mean, that, I mean, you know, Steve, so, so let's take yeah. it in an even a kind of a similar tack. Let's talk about. Nothing compares to you. The original version recorded yeah. by St. Paul with the family in yeah. 1985. Um, I actually saw St. Paul do that live in 1998 at a Prince convention in Ohio. And Ricky was on the piano. Paul sang oh, it. Shoot. And just that, like his voice. That is my favorite version of that song. The original version. I know what Sinead O'Connor did. And there's, you know, no, yeah. not there. And obviously Prince covered it, you know, um, a number of times in concert. But St. Paul's version is is the version for me. She also changed the lyric in it. She did. Because she didn't like the number 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 15 days, what did she sing? We know it wasn't 17 days. I mean. <laughs> Being stupid, you know. But, yeah, yeah, somebody's going to tell that stupid ass white guy to stop talking. Just let Jay do the talking here. Oh, my God. Did I just say that? I did. I totally said that. We're not cutting that out. I'm not cutting that out. But, you know, it's it's gotten to the point where, you know, I know that there's been, we've had some scheduling uh, things. I'm just excited yeah. that St. Paul is going to be with us today. You know, uh, just looking forward to kind of talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he uh, does. Jay, it, it's a testament to him and, and also a statement to his work ethic because he has really tried to make this interview happen several different times for us. And who are we to him? I mean, you know, you have a little bit more. Uh, you know, you've met him, you've, you've, you've had a little more rapport and interaction. I've had a little interaction online, but you've actually had in-person interaction with him. But he's very generous that way. He really uh, is. And really has tried to make this work. You know, for a lot of people, Labor Day weekend is, you know, being at home with the family. So he's probably sneaking in a few minutes because he's probably got his kids coming over for, I don't know, you know, cooking burgers or whatever like that. You know, hosting a pool party, making but, sure Jimmy the Duck is doing yeah. okay. But, but I mean, so think about that. So, you know, we're, we're getting some time with St. Paul, which is great. But, you know, the work he's doing with, you know, St. Paul and the Minneapolis Funk All-Stars. All-Stars, you know, right? man. I think he was just in Singapore. I mean, he, he tours, he performs the community things that, that he does. You know, The Rotary it's, Club. The Rotary Club. I, I mean, to your point, that is a testament to somebody who's well-rounded, gives mm -hmm. back to the community, is part of the first family of, of Minnesota. You know, the, 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 Kurt, talk about some of the philanthropic things. That, that St. Paul does, which I'm sure he'll get into. Uh, talk about that. So uh, he's got a, a scholarship that they set up uh, some years back for the uh, University of Minnesota music scholarship. Now, I could be wrong on this, and we could probably ask him uh, if he's got the time, uh, if Corey Wong wasn't one of those recipients, and it wouldn't surprise me if he was. Uh, you, we just talked about that before I hit record. Uh, Corey Wong, one of my favorite uh, musicians right now. Um, he just amazing electric guitarist. Uh, his band has got guys like uh, he's had Sonny T in there. He Michael Bland on drums, and Michael was actually a big uh, supporter and proponent of his career. And um, uh, I know that St. Paul's got some kind of connection. He's actually interviewed him on his podcast, Music on the Run. Which is just a callback to all of the things that Paul has going on. And then, right, and then the yeah. podcast, Music on the Run, yeah. you know, or Funk Fridays, okay? You want a jolt of great <gasps> musicianship, yeah. you know, Funk Fridays, you know, two-minute clips of a bunch of just musicians um, playing real music. You know, it's yeah. un... Yeah, I'm checking to see. We got five minutes to the top of the hour here, so... Uh... Yeah, and, and to your point... St. Paul has really, you know, moved heaven and earth to to accommodate us. So, you know, we we need to give him his love. Yep. 
So, Che, uh, while uh, we're waiting for Paul to get into the green room, because we see he's just uh, sending me a little message here on Facebook Messenger, um, like, like to echo your sentiments, we're really excited to have uh, Paul on. And, and it, I just want to emphasize one thing about the guy. He's got an immense music vocabulary. You, know, you go through playing for the Catholic liturgy, to all the different types of music that he is able to play. I mean, he's played, cla he does a classic rock covers band, but he's played for Steve Miller. Guitar, I might add. Not bass guitar, but guitar. The guy just has this wide range of ability, uh, I guess, to be chameleonic. You know, and uh, I, I just really want to emphasize the guy's got just such a wide vocabulary. Right. And the, the, the musical chops are obviously legit, uh, no matter what genre of music. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's it, it's gotten to the point where it's still impressive after four or five decades. Uh, honestly, I think his voice is better now than than his early solo records. And I will tell him virtually to his face that, dude, you, it just gets better with time. He really sure. does. He, he has a, a incredible, you know, and all that, you know, his mom. <laughs> it's a beast on the keyboards and organ and stuff. Absolutely. You know, and, and coming from that first family of music in Minnesota, you know. They are the first family. All talented. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's unbelievable how blessed he is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring uh, our guests in here in just a minute. Let me let's, uh, get his music. Of course, the moment I need to use the thing it uh, here we go all right we're gonna bring our guest in well there we Paul go Paul peterson how are look you man how, look how dapper you look i i'm i'm ready for work yes i'm ready for work thank <laughs> you i appreciate the dapper part it fools everybody i work in the wine and spirits industry and yeah. I tell people at age 54, it nobody takes you seriously selling, you know, high-end stuff, wearing a T-shirt and jeans. So you, you know the deal. You got to look the I part. I do. I uh, totally you know. get it. But you got to lose that picture behind you when you're selling stuff like that. The guy with the little, your background. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't carry this with me wherever I go. <laughs> I hope not. You well, ain't going to sell anything with that behind you, man. So we want to play just a little sliver, if I can. Please. For people who know this tune, of the many attributes, we just did a little intro about your illustrious career and the amazing vocabulary and music that you embody, uh, uh, Paul. Uh, this is off of uh, your album, which is behind us with the two different covers. I want to ask you about that too. Break On Free, which came out two years ago, and this is You Got To Love. But it's also the theme on your show, Music on the Run, on the Music on the Run podcast. Ah, very, uh, yes. very observant of you. And it is. The, I swear to God, the you that you have in the back, I swear <laughs> to God, that sounds like Prince is singing on the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, not nearly as good as P, but uh, uh, I'll, <laughs> I take that as a high compliment. Thank you. No, dude, much. it sounds like P Prince is on that. Uh, do, we are just thrilled to have you. And thank you for carving time out of your extremely busy schedule. You are like, we, we call you the uh, hardest working man in showbiz. You really embody that. Yeah, my wife's been talking to me about that. She's like, dude, you're, you're about to be 60. Is this, are you, 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 could, you know, say no to something. And I was trying to exercise <laughs> the no, and it couldn't happen on this podcast because I love you guys. And you've been so supportive of, of me over my career. And uh, so... Mm -hmm. No wasn't an option today, but I've got my family outside by the pool. It's like I our knew last it. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's Labor Day our, weekend. Totally. Yep. Not to mention, you know, a bunch of church stuff and singing at weddings and taking care of what I have to take care of. It's all good. I'm now, lucky to have the work I've got. You, no, seriously. But I, I have two questions for you, if you don't mind, Jay. I've been shopping at the bit. Because I'm also a runner, and before coming on here with you about, oh, what, Jay, 45 minutes ago, I went to the gym. I literally have a gym spitting distance from my house, and I did a four-mile nice. circuit training exercise and a four-mile run after that just to get pumping and get going. Because, you know, nice. the metabolism slows down at a certain point. you got to work. You know, I, can, I like to eat ice cream too, Paul. 
I like to eat ice Man, cream. Man, I I have a problem with that. Ice cream and I are are dear friends. Yes, same. We, and it we, doesn't we matter are, what time we of year. A little, we're a little estranged right now, Monday through Friday, but we we have visiting rights on the weekends with each other. And that's important. Is it still the peppermint bonbon? Yeah, it, that's that's a good one. I also like I got others now that have creeped in. So it, it's a sickness. I've been trying to I've been trying to curb to once or twice a week with kiwi yogurt. I don't know if you have that brand in in your town. I don't know. That that's supposedly healthier. Only thirty calories an ounce. So you know. Yeah. So yeah, I know. Oh, it's not bad. Crap. Actually, it's not bad. It's not it's not a thousand percent butterfat. But the other question I have is, uh, what what shoes do you work with as a runner? Because I know you've done half marathons, marathons. Yeah, Newtons. Since I started running, Newtons are great. We have a rep here in town, and he takes great care of us, and we wear the latest stuff and, you know, make, try to uh, be their advocate. And I'm telling you, I think they're great shoes. I've tried other shoes. These are my favorite right now. But I'm a, unfortunately on a little bit of a running hiatus. My knees are not having it for the last year or so. My mileage has gone from full marathons down to about, I don't even want to say it, just because I don't like waking up in pain. So I'm trying to get my my uh, head wrapped around what has got to be plan B because I love running. Yeah, I hear and now I, now I can't do it because my knees are like going, oh, no, <laughs> no, no. I don't believe you're going to be able to walk tomorrow, which is so weird for me because, you know, the miles I put in, I don't think it's I don't think it's because of running that my knees are. I think it's because I'm creeping up on a little Listen, age thing. You gotta tell me. I I had about ten Shoot. years ago with my left knee. I've I've had meniscus uh, repair on the left knee and, and medial mm. meniscus repair, and I had to take a hiatus myself. But now yeah. since I lift weights, I don't have to run as much anymore to get the results uh-huh. that I want. I, nice. I know I get it, but you can do certain exercises to help straighten those knees that help. It's true. I, mean, I do not. All I have to do is carve time to do uh, them. What time, Paul? <laughs> You're here, there, and everywhere. Well, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't get done because I don't have time. I can't wake up any earlier, and I can't go to bed any later. Yeah. I'm going to so, die. You know what, Paul? And, and I wanted to ask you that question because it kind of harkens back to something that Kurt and I were talking about in our intro. I mean, you you are busy. Um, you know, I mean, between the work that you're doing with the Minneapolis phone call stars, your solo, mm. the, 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 the work that you do at church and in your community, can you mm-hmm. tell us how, how you balance all of those things <laughs> being, being that busy? Yeah. Get up early and go to bed late. That's how I balance that. Uh, balance has always been a challenge for me. Uh, I don't like to say no very much. Um, being a part of my community and giving back has become such a priority priority to me that uh, it's difficult to to say no because uh, I've been given so much and I've been so blessed that I it, it's time and and it has been time and I've made it a point to make it time to give back and it's what I want to do and. What I'm working on right now is the balance to make sure that I'm healthy enough to be 100% for the 75 jobs that I currently have. I'm having to turn down tours with other people whom I love that I won't mention here because I don't want to disappoint anybody. Um, But I I, I just can't do it all. Plus, volunteering as president of Edina Rotary right now, uh, trying to raise money for our gala that's at Paisley Park and, and acquiring auction items. I was at uh, Leonard Skinner last night because a buddy of mine, Damon Johnson, plays in that band. And we did a show together in, in April. And he said, come to the show. And they all signed a guitar for me. So I've got you know, four Rock and Roll Hall of Famers who have signed guitars for me. That So, I mean, I'm into it. I love that part of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, church work for me has been so important. I, I, it came, I've always played at church, but I've never was a music leader at church or had litur- mm-hmm. liturgist. That was a surprise a gig. I went into this church, which my kids used to go to. I would take my kids there, meaning um, 
when I lived in Edina. And my video company that I have was streaming live, uh, live streaming funerals. That's kind of a conundrum there. We were streaming funerals, right? And the, the one of the church ladies said, you, you do music once in a while, don't you? And I was like, yeah, once in a while. <laughs> and they said, we're looking for a piano player to take over because we just lost our music liturgist. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I know people in town that I can maybe help you out and, and consult. And then uh, I felt like God went, this is for you, knucklehead. You're supposed to be doing this. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. no, I'm not. Jay, tell them our tell them our tagline. Yeah, our our tagline is you know when the universe answers, you've got to answer that. Oh, universe knocks, you've got to answer that door. When so God I did, and it's been the best experience in my life. It reminds me uh, of of my mom every time I'm playing the church sure. organ or playing. I know my mom was a very strict Catholic, and we grew up that way, and. Um, Getting back to my Catholic roots isn't going to hurt anything in my life. Absolutely, and it, and it you know it gives me an opportunity to develop my relationship with God, and that's mm -hmm. between me and Him, and that's what works for me. And boy, the people that I've met there have, uh, and the way they approach music, and the reason why they're in music is way different than uh, why my musician friends are in music. These people are there because they want to be there and they're volunteering their time and they want to just lift their voices no matter uh, what, uh, where they're at in their uh, skill level. And it just doesn't matter. It's the, all about the hang and how can I provide a, uh, a place for them to be able to do it. And that's what we do. That's cool. So I, I also, for a long time, for 30 years, sang in an Episcopal church and cantered at a Catholic church. So I See? know my Marty, See? I know Marty Hoggins music fairly well. <laughs> oh yeah. Good old Marty, man. I, and he's he also from, Mini, and he's in. also from Minnesota as well. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so from Morris Day to Marty Hoggin, you cover all the bases, man. <laughs> I would say, yeah, that is, I'm a little, uh, crazy. That's what I am. I love it all, man. Music is music, and music is healing, so why not do it all? You don't got to be pigeonholed into doing one thing. That's right. what I love about playing funk. I can play funk. Then I can go to the Leonard Skinner show and hang out with my friends because I toured with Peter Frampton, and we warmed up or opened up for Leonard Skinner in 2016. It's just music, man. It's music. Kurt and I were talking about that uh, just before you came on. We were talking mm -hmm. about the fact that you play funk, you play rock, you play pop. I mean, again, you know, the collaborations with Brampton, Steve Miller Band, Olita Adams. Yeah. Know, is, is it difficult for you, St. Paul, going between the, the genres? But I, I, I'm Heck just, no. used to it, right? I mean, for you, it's just. Man, you just play. Yeah. You know, we don't work music. We play music. Right. Right. Credit you... to my big brother, Billy, who said that. You've got such a musical family. I mean, from your first solo album, where there are a couple tracks where it was a family affair, you know, uh, co-writing or your brother Ricky oh, yeah. playing. Keys. Oh, yeah. But you've got to work with some amazing people. Um, uh, da D David Sanborn uh, playing oh, yeah. sax on two of your tracks. And, dude, the, the, the one track there uh, where you're channeling your inner Stevie Wonder. I can't believe we're through. Oh, dude, that is total. I'm like. We were playing it last night. I just, I was like, the, people can talk about intimacy, and I love the song Intimacy, but yeah. that song, that's my jam on that album. Man. Two stories. Number one, that's my mom playing the intro on the Overheim. Right. Number two, I wrote that for my girlfriend in 11th grade, wow. who's been my wife and is upstairs working out right now for 34 years. Man. That's yeah. Great. You know, Paul, we, you know, we, we love those kind of stories. I remember years ago when I had asked you about the, your, the inspiration for you and only reminds me of you, which I've told you many times is one of my and my beloved Robin's songs and has been uh, for years. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I spared you and I muted my, my microphone. <laughs> and, and, you know, for us, it's, you know, I remember you sharing the story about how you wrote only reminds me of you. 
you know, and that was back when you and I collaborated, you know, the, you know we're, we're in communication years and years and years ago. So, you know, I, I appreciate those kind of, you know, in, inside stories. Oh, yeah. I mean, every song has a story, doesn't it? It should. Right, right. Or, well, I want to figure out a timeline that you had. So one of your best buds who collaborated with you on the uh, uh, Oliver Lieber, right? The, oh, the, yeah. The, the son of, you know, Lieber and Stoller, man, come on. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. it's, I mean, you know, he comes from musical royalty as well. Um, but, you know, you had Paul Abdul collaborate on on choreography for Rich Man and Oliver Lieber in the mix there. Is that how that whole thing for 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 her solo career start? Sort of. She she and I were very, very close. And uh, cool. She said that, yeah, I've got this little demo deal with uh LaFace Records, I believe it was, <clears throat> or Virgin or something. I said, I just played on something, you know, when I was in Minneapolis. Can I play it for you? This is my buddy, Oliver Lieber, is a great writer, and you should hear it. And gave her the cassette, and the rest is history. 20 million records later, right. I just played I just played on the record. I was like, uh, I was the conduit, and, you know, we, we all do that for each other, and I couldn't be happier for her I couldn't be happier for him you know it, it, and uh, you know it's funny because people ask me aren't you mad that you, it wasn't you who produced that or, or whatever I'm like no it's my, my great buddy did that are you kidding and he you know he's appreciative he took me along for the ride he took care of me yeah. um and look the, you know, I'm a big believer in you 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 get what you're supposed to get. It's, it's not for lack of showing up because I always show up. But I believe there's some uh, another thing uh, working behind the scenes that gives us what we need and doesn't give us what we don't need. So well that said. that that is peace for me. Paul, can you talk a little bit about your style of writing? Like when you sit down to write. Um, you know, you're drawing on past experiences, you're drawing on what's going on in your life right now. I mean, do you sit down and just write or what's your process, if you can share it? Oh, it varies depending on what acts I have in my hand. If it's a guitar, I'll write one way. If it's, uh, sometimes I'll hear a groove in my head uh, out on a run or, you know, in the bathroom or whatever. You got to have the phone close by. Oh, that's my grandson. Look how cute he is. Oh, look at that. Look at those boy. eyes. Oh, he is a little human now. He loves his grandpa. I just get oh. grandpa and take care. But you got your, anyways, to get back, You, I always have the voice memo here. And I, I've got thousands of things that go like this. So I'll start a groove and I'll go, what the hell was that? I'll go back and listen to it later. But ah, I guess that'll work. I'll have melodies in there. I'll do whatever. And that will be the spark for me because sparks are some things that sometimes can elude you when you're writing. So whenever they come, wherever they come, I put them down. And it could be a drum groove. It could be a bass groove. It could be a, um, a chordal progression. I can tell you that Funk Friday has helped me um, and kept me accountable to keep creating for... 234 consecutive episodes. I have Crazy. to produce something every week. And it's got to be badass because I'm asking my heroes mm -hmm. to play on this. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't call a, uh, Little John or JR or Greg Billingaines or uh, Phil X or uh, Hall and Oates people to play on a piece of. Right. 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 Because I don't, I mean, I. I don't want that, but so I want, it always needs to be good. And that's a nice pressure to have. However, it's got to get done. So I, I'm not too precious about what comes out is at the end of the day, it'll be good because of the people that I call on the phone and say, can you polish this turd? <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, you're only as good as the company you keep, and you have kept some pretty amazing, and still keep some pretty amazing company in your life, both musically and professionally and personally. Yeah, I've been lucky, man. Speaking yeah, of which, your your brother from another mother, Mr. Eric Leeds, who yeah. I had on the, uh, before Jay and I uh, teamed up for the new version of the podcast here, 
this album right here, which I did get autographed. Spent yes. Thank Dude, you. I, I, I love this album. Thank you. And your your vocabulary in that. Now, Eric, I've talked to Eric, and you know you know how frank he is. <laughs> oh yes. You have a, you're you're faintly acquainted with that side of him. This is and, why I love him. Yep. Yep, but he he said um, out of all the people that he's worked with in his career, you are the best musician he's ever worked with, and he doesn't That's make those crazy. compliments lightly. Wow, um, and, he, and he is, wow. That's very and, cool. Well, here's the thing, you know, here's this guy who went to Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, PA. He you know reads and writes the music, and you, I don't believe you write music formally or read it. You, you, it's just in you. You were just born. I'm a it. terrible reader. I use these. But you you use them very I well. I use my ears. I use my ears, and it, it's it's been a godsend and a curse all at the same time. Because you want to get me to shut up, put notation in front of me, and I'll be like. Um, but he says you're you may explain something to him, like he explains a chord to you a certain way, and you're like, oh, the major minor chord. Yeah, I could play. But you compliment him so well. You know, and um, when I listen to that album, there's a lot of fretless bass on there, and mm -hmm. uh, which I love the, the fretless yeah. bass. Um, I let I let him dictate a lot of that record because who gets to sit in a room with someone like Eric Leeds for six months? It was a gift. I look, I'd be sitting like this in the way my studio is set up, and my speakers would be right in front of me. Right, he'd be directly behind me with a microphone playing into the back of my head for six months. It was beautiful. I'm sure. And I just let you know, I said, okay, Eric, uh, uh, he, we were equal partners, but I let him kind of lead the way because he yeah. is so gifted. And I wanted to, I wanted him to lead because I wanted to grab all that brilliance out of him. And, and I want to do another record with him because I know how much he loves this project and he doesn't care about anything else. No. He's funny that way. He's like, nope. The only thing I'm interested in is is playing F Deluxe stuff and LP music stuff. I don't care about playing Prince music. I've done there. And I've asked him to sit in with my band. He's like, no. I love you. <laughs> no. I'm like, please, come on. He's like, Dude, why would I want to play with you when I play it with Prince? I'm like, okay, I understand that. <laughs> But Mr. Leeds is a very important person in my life, and I love him. And and he is the he is the Howard Hughes of the tenor saxophone. He's the, he, he, the Howard Hughes of funk. He stays in sheds in his apartment all day long, and I try to get him out, and I can get him out to play on records and stuff like that in session. So yeah. that's what he likes to do. No, I, I we, he's he's an immense talent. And and speaking of F Deluxe, speaking of this wonderful album, Gaslight. Um, I, I know that, you know, pandemic might have thrown a, a monkey wrench as it did for all of us uh, mm -hmm. for this couple of years. Is there it, with with the first family album creeping up on 40 years next year? Mm -hmm. That's crazy to think about that. Um, <clears> I'm sure for it. the guy who was participant in it most of all. But mm -hmm. um, is there any chance we could see a reunion of sorts, possibly maybe of you guys doing some kind of tribute to that album? We're talking right now. Good. That's all I got for you. No, Nobody's okay. committed. Hey. Nobody's committed to anything, but we're on the phone. Man, we're talking about it. Nice. Of course, I want it to happen selfishly. Yeah. Uh, I want it to happen for people like you two. Appreciate and the Prince fans around the world. Yeah. And I want it to happen for me too selfishly because I love those people. And I don't know when we'll ever do it again. Or the Minneapolis Funk All Stars. I mean, you, 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 including people you'd never initially worked with, members of the NPG, uh, totally. Lisa Fiorillo, who yes. you never really worked with. She's fabulous. Totally. She's unbelievable. Uh, Liv Warfield. Um, oh, Liv. Sandra O'Neill. Um, mm -hmm. um, there's so many now that I, I can't even remember everybody that I worked with. Um, it's Dr. been. Fink. Good old Fink. I love that dude so much. He's great. Bean, Odell, um, Oliver Lieber, of course. Um, yeah. Greg Fillingage was going to do a special um, appearance with me. 
at, at uh, my brother, but I got COVID <laughs> and I had to cancel the gig, but he's become a good friend. He wants to play some funk with us at some point. So uh, it's been, really, and of course, uh, I just got back from Europe and I did these dates with Candy Dolper and she and I had never worked together except on Fourth Friday, right? Yeah. Then you got Shelby J. I was there with oh, and Eddie okay. M. So it is a, there are many of us who are um, keeping the Prince sound alive. And I think it's in a very important thing for us to do. And we got to remember and keep in mind that we're doing this for the right reasons. And we are trying to show anybody up. We're not trying to be him in any way because God knows who can do that. Nobody. Right. right. But, but it's important that we keep that music alive because who, who better to do it than the people who were there. Right. Yeah. I ain't mad at Sheila. I ain't mad at Shelby. I ain't mad at um, the MPG, the revolution, meaning I'm so grateful that they are out there doing what they're doing because we need people like that. Even the imp impersonators out there who are doing yeah. a great job. Marshall is a look at man. He's great. I ain't going to do that, but he's great at it. And he's I, selling I, out everywhere, keeping Prince's music at the forefront of people's mind. And yeah. man, we need that. You know, and Paul, oh, that's interesting that you say that because when we see clips of you performing and, you know, at YouTube or wherever, you know, that's, you all are true to the music. You know, you're true to the, the to the arrangements, you know, but your, your own stamp put on it. I've seen you do cool before, you know. Yeah. Keeping that alive is, I, I mean, it's so important. Well, they're fun songs. I see with the All Stars, I'm not pinned down to any music, any one band. I get to play whatever the hell I want, whatever. which is super fun. I get the best catalog to choose from. The Minneapolis Sound. You know, all I care about is doing it with uh, integrity and doing it well. That's it. We would love to have you come out to the East Coast and do that too, Paul, because it, it, God, it's a long time. I ago. need to come to the East Coast. It's been so dry for us. And let me tell you, it is not easy. I'm doing everything with the All-Stars. I'm booking it. I mean, I have a manager who does a nice job. But, you know, you, you get these young, young people who don't know about what the Minneapolis Sound is about, and they're like – well, how many people can you get? Do you put into a club? I'm like, well, it's been a minute since we've been to the East Coast. Oh, I don't think, well, I don't think so. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay, you're lost, buddy. I tried getting Tanya Giddens to. Uh, uh, we 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 had her on the podcast uh, actually last episode we had, and uh, she had asked me because I had mentioned that you guys could play. Uh, I live outside the Philly area, and there's a perfect venue called the Ardmore Music Hall. Uh, I don't know anybody there, but man, if I could put you in touch with somebody there, because that would be the perfect place for you to bring that kind of music. Yeah. I, here's one of the things I want to say, say no to is trying to do all the things I do for the Minneapolis Punk All Star. I, I need help. Yeah. Okay. So I don't need to be the booking agent, the travel right. agent, right? the road manager, Oof. you know, the technical guy, the driver. I mean, all, that's who I am, though. Yeah. Uh, because I know it gets done. Yeah. So that's what's yeah. going to change for this big birthday coming up. I'm like, okay, y'all, you got it. I brought you this for now. What? October 18th is going to be a very special day. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I I get it, man. I mean, not terribly far behind you. You know, I'm 54. Jay, yeah. you're a little closer. Oh, well, I'm closer to you. So. <laughs> Are you? Okay. So We're all in that club, so we get it, man. And, uh, you know, I have a good, very good friend of mine, songwriter Bob Halligan, who he, him and his wife, I think they're celebrating 49 years being married on your birthday as well. Wow. So, yeah. That's up to them. You know, yeah, Bob, man. I remember when you had booked your dates at the Iridium back in March of yes. 2020. And I was actually planning on going to that show, and I ended up in the hospital the day before. Um, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my tickets purchased and everything, and I had emergency abdominal surgery the day before the gig. So, oh, it wasn't COVID. It was a no, no, no but it was, it was the week before everything shut down. And I had my tickets for the Iridium. I'm like, St. Paul is coming. And, and I know that you guys still pulled off the show despite all of the, the challenges. We did. Uh, we did. Seeing the, the clips on there, you guys were funky and fantastic. It was really fun. Me, my brother in law, Jay, and uh, uh, 
Carl Burnett, great player, played with Michelle uh, and um, a bunch of people. Killer, killer guitar player. What a great club. I, I was supposed to have seen Les Paul there and he oh. would, had gotten ill. Oh. But his replacement guitarist with the with the Les Paul trio, right? What a great, I mean, you talk about <laughs> musicianship. And Bucky Pizzarelli sat in for Les Paul. And, of course, he was the Tonight with, with Doc Severance, and he was the Tonight Show guitarist. And I yeah. believe he was the touring guitarist with the famous clarinetist who is escaping my brain right now. Um, but he, he, you know, Bucky Pizzarelli. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and I know that music's in your vocabulary. Can I ask you, when you were a kid, your mom's bringing all these jazz luminaries into the household, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Oscar, well, Oscar Peterson was one of them. Am I correct in that? You know, I, I, I think it's just a little bit of lore. My okay. father recorded with him, but I'm not sure it was in the house. But every, uh, every um, musician from the Minneapolis scene was well, here. This is the place to rehearse. Of course, we still rehearse here, but yeah, to your point, a bunch of great musicians were passing through here, mm -hmm. jazz musicians from the 30s and 40s. That's that era of, of uh, big band music and jazz. So what we grew up, I didn't know any different. I'm like, I love this. Uh, and then Stevie came in and then Earth, Wind and Fire came in and then, Jesus. you know, all that. So I'm like, oh, whatever this is, I like this. And your best buds with Greg Fillingaines, who got to play on Songs in the Key of Life when he was 25. I mean, forget about it. Well, I wouldn't say best buds, but he is, he well, is, okay. he's such a good guy. And yeah. he is, I'm telling you, he, um, what a brilliant, brilliant keyboard player. I mean, it's so funny because, again, this is a Funk Friday thing. During the pandemic, I called my heroes and I said, uh, Greg, you don't know me. He might know my brother, but do you want to do a one-minute piece of music for free to make the internet a bit funkier place to be? I'm waiting for the, you know, the no to come through. He's like, sure. I'm like, you said sure. So. That's when the relationship started. I asked to interview him at the last NAMM show, and unfortunately that fell through. Ah. But he, he's he been a very good friend since this has all started a few years back. It's crazy. I only got to see him play with, uh, back in 2008, uh, keyboardist for Boz Skaggs. And, and when right. Boz announced everybody's names, when I heard Greg's name, I was the only person in the audience at Wolf Trap. They went, holy <laughs> shit. I just yelled out and everybody's like, Why the I said, Ma, I was with my mother. She loves Boz yeah. Skaggs and all that. Yeah. That that seventies, you know, I grew up on all that great stuff. I toured with Boss for a whole week. I know you did. <laughs> I love Boss. For a whole week. Dude. Yeah. What oh can you what can you tell us about Boz? I mean, I he and he's a great guitarist as well. He is. Um I was too temporary to give you a read on him. Mm -hmm. the only thing i can tell you is that he he's a perfectionist and yeah. that was it was it was he's pretty full on yeah. you know there you uh, go okay you know, thank you you're going to be real sensitive to your time um yeah. you know and we appreciate the time that you've given us today i just have of course. To, can you just tell us what it's still like for you to be out performing after all these years the the thrill that you, you probably still get oh man you know the fact that people still want to hear what I have to offer is humbling. It just blows my mind. It makes me want to do it again and again and again. If it, the whole thing about music, it's supposed to be a healer. It's supposed to be bring people joy. It's supposed to uh, design. It's designed to give people a break from what's really going on in their life. And being nostalgic now and being a product of the 80s, um, people our age, they, you know, they need a break. They need to go back and go, man, I love this song when I was in high school. You get to, you get to escape for the hour and a half that we play. And we hope we take you on a ride that um, brings you joy. And that's really the bottom line. And it brings me joy to be able to uh, 
still play at the level that I think I'm playing at. I feel like I'm singing better than ever. I'm getting more opportunities. Oh. So the voice getting stronger. Yeah. Um, my, the, the people in my band, uh, the Minneapolis Funk All-Stars were there with zero attitude, uh, because that doesn't belong anywhere. We're there because we love each other. Mm-hmm. We love what we're doing. And there, there can't be drama because like you said, I don't, who has time for that? Oh, you want to cause a little drama? Bye bye. It's, it's just not, it's just not where we want. That's not the feeling I want to have when I'm rehearsing the band, performing with the band. And it's really all about, um, uh, being a conduit for the healing and, and that, that feeling that comes over to you when you hear the music that you love. Case in point, I went to Earth, Wind and Fire the other night. My buddy's playing the, in those bands and I got beautiful seats and I was on the aisle in about the 12th row mm. in the aisles with my hands in the air like I was at an evangelical church crying because these yeah. songs meet so much yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do them with everything you've got in your heart and just don't go... I'm going to phone this one in. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. For that guy who's crying with his arms all held up like he's in an evangelical church, yeah. I'm playing for you, buddy. Um, yeah. it, it's a spiritual thing, and music is funny that way, but uh, it's important that we treat it with the respect that it deserves, and oh, man, just keep doing what we're doing until we drop. Love it. Love it. Amen. That thank thank you for that. I mean, it it is a spiritual event if it's done right. <laughs> Otherwise, it's oh, what time is dinner? Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh no, I get it. There's a very few of those. Trust me. Oh no, no. Uh, speaking of music being a healing component, I know you're, you're precious on time. We don't want to keep you too long. Uh, no I know problem. you got family, but um, I wanted to bring up that recently you uh, hosted Cornbread Harris, uh, Jimmy Jam's father. Oh, at the man. Edina Rotary Club. Now, the guy's, yeah. what, 97? Mm-hmm. And He's Andre amazing. Swenson has got a new book out about his life, and I believe a yeah. record label she put out as well to put some of his music out. Can you talk us totally. a little bit about that? Well, yeah. I actually did a record with Cornbread a few years back with my brother Ricky and, and Billy. There was There's a guy who cuts what little hair I've got left. <laughs> his name is John Clifford. And he, had, he uh, during COVID, he had a piano outside of his salon. And somebody who worked with Cornbread called and said, can, can Cornbread come by and play your piano? And of course, John says, yeah. And he started this song, Make the World Come Together or something. I might be screwing up the title. Yeah. And John said, we got to record that. And then my brother was in his chair and showed him the video of that. John said, we got to record that. And Ricky said, I'm in. He called the brothers. We went in, spent a few days. I hit Jimmy Jam up, who was not speaking with his father. I said, man, I got no horse in this race, but we're recording with your dad. And if you want to hear it, you know, here you go. And um, the rest is history. You know, I think Andrea was around at that time and spending time with him. She kind of coordinated the meet, and if I'm getting the stories correct, yeah. If, and if I played one tiny, tiny, tiny role in facilitating that or helping that around, that is what's important in life. Right. Not me going, Jimmy, could you produce my record? No. How about we do something like help reunite a father and son? Yeah, yeah. That's that was the point. what the important yeah. thing is. And he's treated me like family and is so appreciative of, of that connection, which was really minuscule, you guys. But it's a big event in anybody's life who has been estranged from their family. So Jimmy's been very, very kind. Um, he, So I asked Andrea to, to come to Rotary you know, many, many months ago when I knew this book was going to come out. She graciously said yes. And I said, I've got this idea. Bring cornbread and we'll have people, I'll have cornbread play as people are walking in. And, you know, you can't get them off the piano once he's there. I'm like, okay, cornbread time for lunch. We got a program to cornbread, cornbread. He was great. He, people just ate him up. And of course, uh, Adrian is such a great storyteller and mm-hmm. filled us all in on, on his story. And 
ups and downs and in, in the history of who he is. And he she, is a she's a treasure. He Cornbread is a contemporary of my mom and dad, who were also in the scene around the same time. My mom and dad were probably ten years older than Cornbread. They, they didn't really know each other. Got different wow. circles that they were doing. He was more blues. My parents were more jazz. Whatever. But the, it, it was it's pretty incredible connection, and it was just an honor to have them both at my meeting. Wow. Mm. Oh, mm. last question from me. Um, yep. You just mentioned that the Rotary. Can you just talk about being Rotarian and, and what being the president of the Rotary Club means to you in the community? First of all, do you even know what Rotary is? Either one of you? Well, I know that it's a community, community event, people getting together, but you can probably take us. Well, let me tell you what it is for me. I, 12 years ago, my buddy uh, that I've known for many years said, you got to come check out this this club that I'm in called the Rotary Club. I'm like, Man, that's some old white people hanging out in a room, right? Old smoking <laughs> cigarettes. And, and I'm like, I'll go. Sure. I went. It wasn't for me. I saw women in the room. I saw, you know, different different colors in the room. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Good. All right. But I didn't join. I wasn't ready yet. When I when I got off the road, started working at Minneapolis Media Institute, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis's old studio where we taught music production, I went, I, I need to know who's in my community. So I called my friend and he said, yeah, come in for another meeting. So I went in, being a bass player, I'm like, I do not belong here. You know, I, I felt like I was unworthy to be in that room with these community leaders basically all that was was on me these people welcomed me in there we became fast friends um the whole premise of rotary for me is service you give back to your community it was a blueprint for me on how to do that because i'm like i don't know how to do that who knows how to do that they just said okay here's about 12 different opportunities to go serve pick one i'm like I can do that. And there was a social factor when you would walk in the room and you'd meet new people and there would be a speaker like Andrea or um, I'm going to have Gilbert Davidson coming up oh, um, cool. to talk about Live for Love coming. And you get interesting speakers and learn about what's going on in your community. And then you raise money right, to give back to very deserving nonprofits in your community and throughout the world. That's what Rotary is. It is not the old white man's club anymore. It is very diverse. It's younger. And it it's amazing. I went to the International Convention in Singapore, and I didn't realize the reach this company has to help eradicate polio. They're non-political. 1.2 uh, million uh, vials of, of inoculations just went into the Gaza Strip. And UNICEF and polio are going to be giving this to kids in there because there is a little uh, springing up of polio again in that nice area. Man. But we're going to like, <laughs> we're going to get it out of there. That's the power of Rotary. And I, I said, ooh, I, like, I want to be a part of that. And it, it's social, it's, it's community service, and it's fun. So they, they asked me well, after I did, led a few committees if I wanted to be in Rotary leadership. And I said – me, a bass player, you want this lowly little musician to do that? And they're like, yeah, I want to shake it up a little bit. Come on. And I'm, I'm like, well, all right, then. I forgot to tell my wife I was taking this on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She said, you did what? She said, yeah, I'm your own in this one, baby. <laughs> she is the, yeah. So it, I had to be the secretary first, the treasurer, then the, uh, then I had a year in waiting to just kind of help. And now I'm in my second month of running meetings and getting ready for our big gala at Paisley Park and this big online auction that we're going to have. I'm going to ask you a favor and help me get the word out about the auction once I have it up and running. Sure. We'd love to either have you back on if you're, if you're oh, you know. Great. And and or you know you, you, if you have a link you want to send me in the messenger thread that we have together I'll make sure I'll probably put we'll probably put this episode out uh, within the next couple of days and I'll I'll make sure that link's on there. 
Absolutely. No question. It won't be live until the 14th of September, though. So fine. We'll okay. make sure uh, we'll, we'll plug the hell out of it, Paul. Thank you. And Welcome. Paul, to me, I want to say thank you for you betcha. Friendship, the music, the memories, everything. You know, you don't know, uh, you know, what you've done in our lives, you know, through your music. Oh, man. Thank you. Know, you. Very grateful from, you know, a humble fan. Ah, oh, thank you, bro. I appreciate you very much. And, uh, you know, when it came, when you guys call, I'm there. We we really appreciate that, man. And, and if you like what you heard today, please hit the like button, subscribe down below. And uh, we look forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul Peterson. We appreciate it. <laughs> and, and listen, uh, uh, thanks for bringing a little funk and grease to our podcast and to the okay. Rotary Club. That's what they needed. They needed the funk. It's a funk. By the way, it ain't a fundraiser. It's a funk raiser. There you go. See, there you go. And re and and remember, as I always say, Jay, you're going to lead us off with our last of the. But I always say, a rising tide lifts all boats. And Jay. Yes. And on that note, once again, Saint Paul Peterson, thank you. And remember, y'all, when the universe comes knocking, make sure you answer that door. Peace. Peace. <laughs>